Hello everyone, in this video, I am just going to use the methodology of multiplexing of 7 segment displays for displaying this sequence using timer interrupt in PIC16 of 877A microcontroller. Let's get started. So as I mentioned earlier, we are just going to use the timer interrupt in PIC16 of 877A for multiplexing process. And in one of the previous videos, we also learnt that what this multiplexing process of 7 segment displays and Following that, we also learned how we can multiplex the 7 segment displays for displaying 2 digit number using our PIC16 of 877A microcontroller. So, this is the program that we wrote in that lecture for printing the number that is this number variable 78. So, the 2 7 segment displays will be printing this 2 digit number 78 by the process of multiplexing. Here you can clearly see this is the programming logic that we wrote and this one is the multiplexing process and this method of multiplexing is nothing but polling process of multiplexing 7 segment displays. Seven segment displays. But I just want to clarify you the doubts why we don't want to use this method of polling process of multiplexing in 7 segment displays. So let me just write some logic over this polling process. You can clearly see this process of multiplexing is happening again and again by the processor since all these lines are written inside the infinite loop of the program that is this while of 1. So that is why this method is called as polling process of multiplexing 7 segment displays and let me just try to write some logic that is let me just assume that I just want these two displays displaying the numbers from 0, 0 to number 99 at an interval of 500 millisecond for each character that is I want these two displays to be displaying the numbers from 0 to number 99 with an interval of 500 milliseconds that is half a second for each count and before that let me, let me just test this program that we wrote let me just see whether these two displays are displaying the number 78 so this is the Proteus simulation circuit that we built and for simulation as I mentioned these two transistors are not functioning in my Proteus and that is why we will be connecting the common pins of these two displays connected to the GPO pins of the microcontroller and they will be syncing the current through the GPO pins. So for simulation purpose we are doing this but in hardware we will be building this circuit. So the same circuit that we are going to build and the common pin of these two displays in the hardware will be driven to ground using NPN transistors such as BC547. So let me just delete all these for simulation purpose and I am going to connect this first display common pin to RC0 and I am connecting the second display common pin to RC1. So this was the circuit you can clearly see first display is connected to RC0 and RC1. And regarding now you can clearly see these are common cathode displays so for turning on the first display I just want to make the common pin low and for turning off the first display I just want to make the common pin to be high. So this is the logic I just want to swap the logic that I have defined right over here if the segment is on I just want to give the number to be 0 and if the segment is off I just want to provide high to that particular pin. So this is meant for simulation purpose and in hardware the case is reverse. So I hope you understood that in that lecture. So I have already taught you what is multiplexing process of 7 segment display in a separate lecture and then we used the polling method of multiplexing process for printing 2 digit number onto 2 7 segment displays in another separate lecture. So I highly recommend you 
watching those two lectures before continuing in this video. In addition to these two videos, we are also going to use the timer interrupt which we implemented in a separate lecture for multiplexing process. So in addition to those two lectures, please watch that lecture too and then you can proceed in this video. Since I have provided all this lecture in a sequential manner, if you are following the sequence, that is not an issue. If you have not followed those sequence or if you are having a basic knowledge on these terminologies that I told, you can continue in this lecture. Let's go in deep into the lecture. Now I am building this project. You can see the build is successful. I am just going to run the simulation now. You can see the program is working fine and it is implementing the multiplexing process that is the polling method of multiplexing process for printing the number 78 onto these two displays. Now let us try to understand the problem which we are going to face in this polling method of multiplexing process. So as I mentioned before we are just going to implement this program that is I am just going to write a program in this circuit itself for printing the numbers from 00 to 99. So let me just rewrite this logic. So after this I am just going to increment the number variable and I am going to check for the number variable if it is 100. I am just going to make the number variable to be 0 and finally I am just going to give a delay for half a second. So you can see the program in logic that is these lines will be helping us to print the data onto the 7 segment displays. In addition to that we are just writing the logic right over here that is the number will be incremented for every half a second and if the variable reaches the number 100 that number variable will be decremented to 0 or initialized to 0. So the numbers from 00, 00 to 99 will be printed on the 7 segment displays with an interval of 500 millisecond or half a second for each number. So this is the programming logic. I am just going to build this project. You can see the build is successful and our program is not having any errors and let me just stop this simulation and I am going to run the new program. You can see I am not getting any numbers displayed in these two seven segment displays in a multiplexed manner. So this is the problem. So the problem here is this delay half a second. So if we are adding any other programming logic which will include some amount of delay to the program that will affect this multiplexing process. So what we want to do is instead of using the polling process of multiplexing 7 segment display we can use the timer interrupt in any microcontroller for performing this multiplexing process. So that is the simplest solution for this kind of problem in multiplexing of 7 segment display. So if you are using this polling method of multiplexing process in your program you must take care of the timing considerations for your logic that you are writing other than this multiplexing in your program. And if you are using the timer interrupt for generating or for multiplexing process you can neglect the timing considerations for your logic. So I highly recommend you to write or multiplex the 7 segment displays for displaying the number using timer interrupt in your program. So let me just do that step by step. So as I mentioned I am just going to use two different programs in this video which we have already used in two different lectures. One is the lecture of multiplexing 7 segment displays using PIC16 of 877A microcontroller and another one is the lecture of timer interrupt programming in PIC16 of 877A microcontroller and as I mentioned before if you are already learning this course 
in an order that i have provided you could have crossed these two lecture videos and if you have not watched them please go back to these two videos for better understanding and then come to this video for clear understanding and now we have already discussed the program that we wrote in this lecture number one that is multiplexing of seven segment displays using pic 16 of 877 microcontroller so that is the program that is available right over here which is useful for printing the number 78 in these two seven segment displays and this one is the program that we wrote in the timer interrupt programming using pic 16 of 877 microcontroller so here we just enable the timer interrupt and all other required interrupt for generating timer interrupt and here in this line we just configured the prescaler of the timer to be 256 and here we loaded the load value for generating timer interrupt for every 10 millisecond in our pic 16 of 877a microcontroller so this is what happens right over here after all the initialization that that is done right over here the programming logic enters into this while of one that is the infinite loop so as the program or the processor is executing all the execution lines that is available inside this while of one it will never leave this loop since this loop will never fail until the microcontroller is stopped so as soon as we configure the timer the timer will be start counting from zero so when the timer reaches the time period of 10 millisecond the timer peripheral in the microcontroller will be interrupting the processor telling that the timer has overflown so the processor what it does is it will stop all it was doing right over here or it will pause all the operations that it has been doing right over here and it will enter into the timer interrupt subroutine or timer interrupt service routine function that is written right over here and after entering into this function it will execute all the executable statements available here in this function and after executing all these things it will again resume back to the main function where it was previously performing all the executable statements and it will be resuming the process that it was doing right over here so this happens or the sequence of operations that i explained now will be happening again and again for every 10 millisecond in our program irrespective of the logic that you are written right over here i have written a blinking exercise logic for exactly one second in this program i'm not going to use this logic so irrespective of the logic that you have written inside the while of one this sequence happens for every 10 millisecond so the timer interrupt subroutine function will be executed for every 10 millisecond once the timer 0 is initialized right over here. So the timer that I have used here is timer 0. You can see here TMR0 and option register is meant for timer 0. So I am just going to use all the methodologies that I used right over here. I am just copying this interrupt subroutine function and I am going to paste it right over here along with the timer count variable. I am just going to use the timer count variable. And along with that, I am just going to copy all these things. That is the timer configuration. So, in this line of option register, we are just setting the prescaler to be 256 and we have loaded the load value for every 10 millisecond so we just calculated the load value for producing exact 10 millisecond delay in that program right so that is why i just requested you to watch that video first before watching this video that is watch these two videos first before watching this video and now i'm not going to use this logic that's all about the requirement from this program i'm just closing this What is the process that I am going to do here is, I am just going to perform this multiplexing process inside this timer interrupt function. So, as I explained the multiplexing process, so now what I am going to do is, you can clearly see I have enabled the timer 0 for every 10 milliseconds. So, timer 0 peripheral will be interrupting the processor for every 10 millisecond. So, the timer subroutine written right over here will be executed for every 10 millisecond irrespective of the logic written right over here in our program so i'm just going to build the same logic that is i'm just going to print the numbers from 00 to 99 in these two seven segment displays using the multiplexing process using 
timer interrupt in PIC16 of AWS Open Microcontroller. I have enabled the timer 0 for every 10 milliseconds and also I have enabled the timer 0 interrupt, global interrupt enable bit and peripheral interrupt enable bit. So these two global interrupt enable bit and peripheral interrupt enable bit is useful for enabling any interrupt, any peripheral interrupt in this microcontroller and this TMR0 IE is meant for timer 0 interrupt. That is why I have enabled these three bits in the microcontroller and after that I have set the prescaler to be 256 and the load value for 10 millisecond. So as I said the multiplexing process is simple. First I am just going to turn on the first 7 segment display and I am going to turn off the second 7 segment display. After this turning on and turning off process for first 7 segment display, I am just going to pass the data required to be printed in the first 7 segment display. And after 10 millisecond, I am just going to turn on the second 7 segment display and I am going to turn off the first 7 segment display. And as soon as I do this, I am just going to pass the data required to be printed in the second 7 segment display. And I am going to do this in a sequential manner for every 10 millisecond. So we did this in the polling process but now we are just going to do this in a interrupt process that is in the timer interrupt mode. So I am just going to copy this. I don't want this delay ms of 10 since we are generating the timer interrupt for delay. So for every 10 millisecond the interrupt function will be called. So I am just deleting this delay ms and I am going to use these lines inside the timer interrupt function that is the timer interrupt subroutine function. So as I mentioned earlier the process is simple right process of multiplexing is simple that is first step that I want to do is I just want to turn on the 7 segment display 1 and I want to turn off the second 7 segment display and I want to pass the data required to be printed in the first 7 segment display that is done using these two lines. So as per our programming logic you can clearly see after all the initialization part that is written right over here the program execution that is the processor will be executing all the lines that is available inside the while of 1. So as soon as the timer has been enabled right over here the timer will be counting time and once it reaches the 10 millisecond delay once it counts 10 milliseconds it will be interrupting the processor telling that the timer has overflown. So once the processor is interrupted the processor will be pausing all it was doing right over here all the execution it was doing right over here and it will be entering into this timer ISR function that is the interrupt service routine function and it will be executing all the lines that is available right over here and after executing all the lines it will be coming back to the while of one and it will be executing or resuming the process that it was doing right over here and again after 10 milliseconds the same process continues. So for every 10 millisecond anyhow the processor will be executing this timer 0 interrupt service routine function. So what I am going to do is first time when the processor comes inside this timer subroutine function I am just going to execute the process for first 7 segment display and second time when the processor comes to this function I am just going to execute the process that needs to be done for printing the data in the second 7 segment display and again when it comes for the third time I am just going to execute these two lines for the first 7 segment display and I am going to continue this process. So I am just going to write a logic in such a way that I am just going to execute the execute these two lines for the first time and for the second time I am just going to execute these two lines. So here I am just going to use this timer count variable which I have declared as global. So if the timer count variable is equal to is equal to 0 I am just going to perform the operation required for printing the data in first 7 segment display and if the timer count variable is equal to is equal to 1 I am just going to execute the statements that needs to be executed for printing the data in 7 segment 2. 
and after all these operations i'm just going to increment the timer count variable and before executing this logic i'm just going to check for the timer count variable to be 3 that is 2 that is greater than or equal to 2 i'm just going to initialize the timer count variable value to be 0 so if the timer count value goes beyond or equals to 2 i am just voluntarily making the timer count variable value to be 0 so i am just doing this purposefully i don't want the timer count variable value to be going beyond the number 2 so first time when the processor enters into this interrupt subroutine function it checks for the timer count value to be greater than or equal to 2 so first time it will be initialized to 0 and so this condition will be failed so this will not be executed and you can clearly see as it is the first time the timer count value will be 0 so this if condition will be true and the program will be executing the required sequence for printing the data that needs to be printed in the first 7 segment display it will turn on the first display and it will turn off the second display in this sequence and it will print the data required to be printed in the first 7 segment display and after execution of this if condition this condition will be failed since the timer count value is 0 and here it will increment the timer count value to be 1 and it will leave this interrupt subroutine function and after 10 millisecond again when the processor comes to this interrupt subroutine function of timer 0 now the timer count value is 1 right so this condition will be failed because timer count value is not equal to 2 or not greater than 2 it is having the value 1 and now also you can clearly see this condition is failed because timer count value is 1 and this condition will become true and these two lines will be executed turning on the second display and turning off the first display and it will print the data required to be printed in the second seven segment display and after executing this the timer count value will be incremented to 2 and it will go back to the main function and after 10 milliseconds again when the interrupt occurs the processor will be coming here for the third time so now you can clearly see the timer count is having the value 2 so if the timer count value greater than or equal to 2 we are just voluntarily making the timer count value to be 0 so this condition will be true and we are just executing the sequence for first seven segment display so this process continues and for every 10 millisecond this displays these two displays will be updated with the required value irrespective of the programming logic that we are writing inside this while of one so this is the multiplexing process using timer interrupt in pic 16 of 877a microcontroller i am just building this code i have already written some logic for printing the numbers from 0 to 99 in these two seven segment displays right so let us test whether it is printing the numbers from 00, 00 to 99 and uh, these two lines for is useful for splitting the first digit and second digit and we are using the same variables right over here this and all we have done in the lecture of multiplexing seven segment display using pic section of a microcontroller so i hope you understood that now i am just building this project you can see the build is successful i am just opening the protest simulation and I am going to run this simulation. Sorry, wait a minute. I just want to initialize this number to be 0. I am just running the simulation. You can see we have successfully implemented the counting sequence in a multiplexed manner in these two seven segment display using timer interrupt in pic 16 of 877a microcontroller so this is how you will be able to multiplex seven segment display using timer interrupt in pic 16 of 877 a microcontroller 
so instead of polling you can use this timer interrupt in an efficient manner for multiplexing process of seven segment display and also for multiplexing process of dot matrix display that i will teach you in another new lectures You can see the sequence is going to complete when it reaches 99 it will start from 0 so our program is working fine it is starting counting from 00 to 99 so as I mentioned we have connected the common pins of these two seven segment displays to the GPIO pins so it will be syncing the current which is not recommended in hardware so we are just going to build this hardware circuit that is we will be driving the common pins of these two seven segment displays using BC547 transistor and we will be driving the base of the transistor using the GPIO pins. The only change that we want to do in the program for this is we just want to make the segment on macro to be 1 and for turning off the segment I just want to provide a low signal in the common pin. And now this program will be working fine in the hardware. For uploading the program onto the microcontroller, first power up the development board using 12 volt 1 amps adapter by this power jack provided in the development board. And then connect the PICI 3 to the USB port of the PC using mini USB cable. And then the terminals of the PICI 3 are connected to the microcontroller as per this circuit diagram. If your development board is not showing these pinouts or if you are not having a development board, you can directly connect the terminals of the PICI 3 to the microcontroller pinouts as per this circuit diagram. Or you can just build the circuit in a breadboard for programming the microcontroller. Once the circuit is built, click on this make and program device main project icon in MPLABX IDE. You can see the device is being programmed. Click on OK. You can see now the programming and verification is complete. That means successfully the program has been uploaded to the microcontroller. Now build the circuit to see the output in the hardware. You can see this is the development board which I am going to use for building the circuit diagram. And luckily I am having a multiplexed 4 7 segment displays right over here in my development board. So I am just going to utilize any two of the 7 segment displays which are multiplexed. So I am just going to use this display and uh, this display. So I will be neglecting these two displays for fetching the output. And you can see the terminals of the 7 segment that is these are all the terminal jumpers for 7 segment display starting from A to G and last one is decimal point. I am not going to connect the decimal point and as per our circuit diagram, I am just going to connect these 8 lines to RB0 to RB7 and in addition to that, we are having the common drills of the 7 segment display. That is these 4 7 segment displays are common cathode type 7 segment displays. So they are driven by NPN transistors right over here. So this one is meant for this display and this transistor is meant for driving the common pin of this display and this T3 transistor is meant for third display and T4 is meant for fourth display. So as per our logic I am just going to use these two seven segment display that is the this one is the tenth place seven segment display and this one is the once place seven segment display that I am going to utilize. So now I will be connecting the T3 base that is the this terminal I will be connecting it to RC0 and T4 base will be connected to RC1. So I am just doing that.
you can see I have successfully connected the base of these two transistors for driving these two seven segment display that is useful for multiplexing these two seven segments for to the pins respectively RC0 and RC1 and here I am having the RB port you can see clearly this one is RB0 and the last pin is RB7. So I will be connecting the A terminal of the 7 segment display to RB0 and similarly I will be connecting in this manner in the opposite direction and finally I will be connecting the decimal point digit of the 7 segment display or the H terminal of the 7 segment display will be connected to RB7. So let me just connect these rails of the 7 segment to the B port of the microcontroller. You can see this is the A terminal b c d e f g and decimal point a i will be connecting it to rb0 b i will be connecting it to rb1 so i am just connecting a to rb0 b to rb1 c will be connected to RB2 D will be connected to RB3 E will be connected to RB4 F will be connected to RB5 and finally, I am not going to connect the decimal point. I am not going to utilize the decimal point of the 7 segment. So, finally, I am connecting the G terminal of the 7 segment display to RB6. So, I am just leaving the RB7. I am not going to use the decimal point available in this 7 segment display anywhere in my programming logic, right? So, I am just leaving that. If you want, you can also utilize the decimal point of the 7 segment display for your own purpose as per your logic so the connections has been made let us see the output in my hardware i am just powering up this development board with the help of 12 volt one amps adapter right over here and you can see this is the output which i got in my hardware you can see the seven segment displays that is these two seven segment displays are multiplexed and it is printing the count value from 00 to 99. And again when it reaches the number 99 it will be rolling over to 0 and it will be counting up and then it will be counting up again. In this manner you will be able to multiplex any number of 7 segment displays as long as you reduce the timer interrupt delay value along with the GPIO pins available in your microcontroller. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.